guys, Jess here. I have a new um, organization video here for you today. Um, I have had a lot of comments on my Facebook page and group um, of, of my friends and followers stating like, you know, my biggest pain point is organizing my scrapbook paper. Um, I don't know how to keep it straight, flat, um, and organized so it's easy to find and work through. So I decided, um, I've touched on my paper organization in a couple of other uh, videos, but it never hurts to revisit some of the methods that I use and I wanna go into a little bit more detail about uh, paper organization and maybe some tips and tricks on how to help you find uh, an organization method that works for you. Um, so we are going to focus on that today. I have a few options I'm going to go over, but first and foremost, what I want to talk about initially is the things you, you need to figure out before, the questions you need to ask yourself before you even begin to organize your paper or your craft room in general. Um, the very first thing you need to ask yourself is, what kind of scrapbooker am I? And what I mean by that is, are you a person or are you a scrapper that only scrapbooks by collections? For example, I have three here. You would keep this together and um, you would only use this collection and scrap with this collection. You wouldn't pull pieces from other, other collections to use with this. Um, or the other, the other option is, are you a scrapbooker who scraps by color? So, um, I, so, you know, so it doesn't matter who the maker is. It's just, I'm doing a layout and it has, um, pinks, yellows, and greens in it. So I'm going to go into my stash and pull everything that I think is going to coordinate with it. So therefore I would organize my product by color. Or the third one is, do you organize your stash by maker? So um, you have a particular maker that you like or brand that you like, and you like to keep those brands together. Um, it's really important to you. Most often when a maker makes uh, you know, a line, everything coordinates, so you like to keep everything together. So those are the three main ways, um, in, in my opinion, that you, people organize their product. So the very first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of scrapper am I? The second thing you need to ask yourself, or not really ask yourself, but you need to kind of evaluate the space that you have. Um, I am very lucky. I have a great uh, nook in our downstairs family room that I've uh, acquired a lot of storage options and bins and drawers and shelves and and I have a, a, a nice size space um, if you're as fortunate as I am that's great the next phase of that is learning how to utilize it um, if you're not so fortunate and you know you only have a closet or you have a cupboard that you have to keep um, all of your supplies in and you have to take it out and scrap at a folding table or in your dining room table um, uh, you know, when you can, then you have to really think about storage options that's going to fit your space um, that you have available to you for your craft supplies. So that's the other really, really important um, aspect to organization. So I encourage you to just kind of sit down and, and ask yourself those two questions and really think about what kind of scrapbooker you are and then your space. So with those two questions in mind, I'll walk you through all my different storage options that I use, and then I the pros and cons of methods I've used in the past, um, and what I currently do for paper storage. So, um, I myself, I scrapbook multiple different ways, so therefore I store my papers in a few different ways. Um, I 
I like to keep collections together so, and by maker. So as you can see here, um, this is an envelope and I have uh, a Coco Vanilla collection in here. I like to keep my collections together until I've kind of um, exhausted them all and I'm ready to, to separate them out. Um, it's really important to me one, because when I, I post designs, I like to be able to provide everybody with where the supplies came from in case somebody wants to purchase it. Um, and two, uh, the obvious, more obvious one is that they coordinate. So it's easy. I can just pull a kit out and just scrap with that kit, or I can start with that kit and then I can pull from my other supplies as well. Um, the other thing I do is, or the other kind of scrapbooker I am, for example, is I um, scrapbook by theme. Um, so if I have a lot of one particular theme, Christmas is a big one. I'm sure a lot of you are like this. Um, acquire lots and lots of Christmas scrapbook and stuff for Valentine's or birthdays or whatever the case may be. Um, if there's certain holidays that I have a lot of product of and that I use frequently, I will dedicate a storage system just for them. So for example, this is Christmas, um, more like a modern, modern Christmas paper. So I had, um, put them all together. So when I'm ready to scrap a Christmas, I have it all in one place and it's not scattered. The other way and uh, the other scrap type of scrapbooker I am and the main kind of scrapbooker I am is I scrapbook by color um, so even if I do pick a collection I still um, go off the colors so I like to make sure that my color my products are sorted by maker and or color depending on where my products at in its use if it's brand new or if it's been opened or if it's been kind of um, used up to to the point where it can be separated out so I kind of do a mixed bag of organizing so like with my um, my papers that I take out of a kit my whole sheets that I use I actually store them by color um, which makes it really easy for me because then when I'm using up my stash I can start with like a really pretty printed paper that I love and then I can go in through all my other products and uh, pick out what colors might coordinate with that paper and then I do the same thing uh, for my scraps my scraps I also keep organized by color and we'll go I have a great video on this but I'll cover it just slightly on my scrap storage as well um, so I find scrapping by color um, is is a really great way. So as you can see, it's kind of like a, a mixed bag of, of a little bit of everything. I start off my new papers. Um, if they're kits, I leave my kits together. If there's individual sheets, I file them by color. Um, and then paper pads, I just keep them on a shelf on my calyx unit just standing up. I keep them together until I've used up quite a few and then I'll separate them out into the colors um, filing system that I do for everything else. You know, kits like this, again, this is a kit, it's Halloween. I haven't even opened it yet. So it's in a package already, I'll keep it together, but once I've opened it, I'll put it in an envelope system and I'll, and I'll show you that in a second. So there's no right or wrong reason um, it's really all about what works best for you and you really need to think about what kind of scrapbooker you are um, because y y you know there are a, a tons or hundreds of different ways I don't know about hundreds <laughs> maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit but there's many different ways to sort and file and store product but it really all comes down to what's gonna work best for you because you want to be able to find it <laughs> you want to be able to easily look and know um, or, or find what you're going after depending on the project. I, I think the worst thing for me as a scrapbooker is taking too much time to find, try and find the product that I'm looking for that I know I have. Um, so this system has really brought efficiency to my scrapbooking and it makes it super easy to find all my papers and what I'm looking for. So that's kind of the, the start. Those, that's the core of really organizing your, your supplies um, and, and paper definitely. So now I wanna go through a few different ways 
I'll kind of walk you through my storage timeline of when I became an early on scrapbooker uh, or when I had my own space, my younger years, my early on years, my infancy, um, all the way up to the system that I do now. And I'll talk through those different methods. So maybe you'll find something that will work for you. Um, and keep in mind, you know, the space that you have. All right, so let's get started. So when I first began, this is really close up guys, <laughs> when I first began scrapbooking, let's see if you can see that, um, I bought these Sterilite three drawer systems um, because I had a very, very tiny space um, and I wanted to maximize the space that I had see if I can get a better view for you. Sorry guys. So this is kind of the top view of it. Um, so you can get these at Walmart, Kmart, on Amazon, um, any, any place like that. And there are three drawers that pull out and they fit 12 by 12s perfectly. Um, and so what I did when I had these is, you know, depending on how much product I had and how much space I had, I think I ended up having like uh, six or eight of these and I stacked them. So you can stack them up like really high. Um, I would put labels on the front and I would organize it by color or collection. You know, I would um, have all my card stocks in one and I'd have them in a rainbow color. And then the other side, the other four, I would organize them by collection or, or pattern paper or color for, for the pattern paper. These are really fantastic. They're inexpensive. I think I think maybe I've already said this, I can't recall, but they're like $10 um, for three, for a drawer of three. And it fits a lot. It fits a lot of paper. Like, um, I can't even recall. I'll just show you. I mean, this is three Echo Park kits. And as you can see, I have plenty of room. I could probably fit 12 or more of those in there. So however many sheets that turns into. Oh, let me see I can give you guys a number. So there's 12, there's 36 sheets um, amongst these three kits that I just showed you and it only covered maybe a quarter or a third of, of this drawer. So you're talking 100 plus sheets of paper in just one drawer. So if you have very little space this is a great way to maximize it. They go perfect in in uh, closets. They're um, just really, I find that they're very inexpensive and very versatile. Um, my only, the only thing, excuse me. The only thing I didn't, did not like about these drawer systems is the fact that the papers were laying down so when I wanted to go through them, I had to take a bunch out to, you know, say I wanted to get to one on the bottom. Um, and that was probably like my least favorite uh, thing about this storage system. But if you're, again, if you're a beginner or, and you don't have a lot of money or you have very limited space, this is a really, really wonderful option. It's really great. So again, these are Sterilite three drawers. Um, I imagine they're probably like a 13 inches wide by a 13 inch deep something along those lines but they're really easy to find I'll, I'll um, put a link below to it so you guys have it in case you want to go find these all right so this container is a little roughed up I'm sorry guys uh, it's not pretty to look at but it's functional <laughs> So I'm sure you're all familiar with these lovely bins. This is an art bin style, but Iris Containers makes a lot of them. Different widths and sizes. This is again, this was another um, storage item that I used in my earlier days. Um, again, it's um, it allows your your papers to be protected from dust and um, they lay flat so you don't have to worry about curling or anything like that um, and they stack so again if you're in limited space these are a really great option um, they are about 
I think they're, uh, well, let's see here. Oh, it doesn't tell me the exact size. It fits 12 by 12, so I'm assuming these are about a 13 by 13 um, container. So sometimes it is a little hard to find like a bookshelf for these to fit on, but it definitely above a closet or even on the floor or stacking, um, they fit really well. And they also actually now have, um, I think Michaels has them, like a rolling cart with um, slots that you can actually fit these in. So that works too. It fits a lot of paper and they, you know, they just snap open in the front and you open it up. I have a, a paper pad just to show you how it looks. There's a little room. This is also great for kit storage. So say you want to, you want to keep your kits together. You can use one container per collection. You can fit all of your, um, you know, if you take this. You can put all your stickers in here as well and everything's together and so when you want a scrapbook so say you have limited space and you're like oh man i really feel like scrapbooking christmas today you can label the front of it christmas you have your christmas paper your christmas embellishments all in one container and all you have to do is take this one down with you and bring it to your kitchen table or your little foldable table it's really portable um, it's great to bring to crops as well um, so it's really good at uh, file, a filing system that way too. Again, my only the thing I ended up not loving about this system is in fact that it's it's things are laying flat. So if you wanted to get to the bottom paper, you had to you know get up. This is the paper pad, but it's easy. But you'd have to thumb through and slide it out. It's not again. It's not a deal breaker. I just found it kind of annoying after a while and I'm just being completely honest with you guys but again it, it is some people don't mind that that's just a personal preference for me so that's why I ended up moving away from the system but I still love it um, and I still will use it on occasion um, for collections that are too big for my folio system that I have so this this is a still really great option price wise I think these containers range from like $6.99 to $12.99 depending on size and brand. Um, Michaels, Joann's, uh, Walmart, they all, Amazon, they all carry these. These are very easy to find. Um, so definitely another good option. Okay, so those are kind of like my beginner storage systems. Um, and I just had, I'll, I'll put, I'll actually, um, I'll put a picture up of my very first scrap space that I had in the house and how archaic it was. It was uh, an old dresser that I originally had made for, for Wyatt's baby room and I just had stuff in the shelves um, and it, it, it was by no means perfect but it was my own little space and I was super excited about it. Um, so it, I, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna share that picture because it's gonna show you guys you don't need all the newest product, all the new the fancy stuff to have your scrapbook supplies organized. You start with the basics and then you find your jam and you figure out you know, all right, what's the next thing I'm gonna purchase? And you piece it together. Um, it's taken me uh, three years to come up with this piece that I have now, and I'm constantly changing and adding and all that. So it doesn't have to happen overnight. Um, it's what's more important is that you know what you have and you it's easy for you to get to because nobody likes wasting time searching for product. Okay, so the next um, item I have to show you is the we are memory keepers oh, we got nice shiny glittery paper on top um we are memory peeper keepers not peepers <laughs> um uh scrapbook clear acrylic paper shelves i'm gonna tip that up um so you can see these are um they fit 12 by 12s this one here is the larger of the two they make two this one has the larger legs. Um, so this one does not fit in the Calyx unit. Um, it's too wide, but they do make a smaller one that does. So I currently use this system. Um, I use it, as you can tell, for cardstock. And I organize my cardstock in rainbow color or by color. Um, it's really easy. It's easy to pull the stack off or thumb, thumb through um, the product. I can easily see it. Um, and it's kind of pretty to look at, like a whole rainbow, um, you know, standing up on top of my shelf. So I find for cardstock, this is a really easy method. Um, and, you know, 
relatively inexpensive, I guess. I don't know. They're they're like $25 for a four tier. So I guess they're moderately priced. I wouldn't call them cheap by any means. But um, they hold a lot of paper. Um, and it's a pretty easy system. It is open though, so they're not it's not protected by by dust or anything like those closed containers are. So that's something to keep in mind if that's something that's uh, important to you or you live in a space where you know there could be it's moisture or you know dust or anything like that. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. Um, but overall, I find this a really great um, organization method for cardstock. Um, so that's the We Are Memory Keepers. Again, you can get these on at Hobby Lobby, like scrapbook.com. I'm pretty sure Joann's, Michael's, they probably all carry something similar to this. So it's a really great system. Okay, here is the next paper storage system I tried for a, a blip in my crafting history timeline um, these are just these you can get at Hobby Lobby they're 12 by 12 container boxes um, and they have this cute little label on the front now I um, am I like to sometimes see my product uh, and I like to sometimes keep it hidden in a box or a drawer it's all depending on what it is and how pretty it looks exposed. I know that sounds so silly, but there are some products that look really nice out in the open, but then there are other products where you know, you know, you're like, I don't want to look at it. I just want to know it's there. <laughs> so, paper's kind of one of those things that I don't need to see the patterns. I just need to know where it is so I can use it or find it. Um, so for a short period of time, I use these boxes. They're really inexpensive, especially if um, you get the, they have the Paper Studio, they're made by Paper Studio, and they have the sale all the time at Hobby Lobby where it's like 50% off. These end up being like $2.99 or $3.99 a piece. Uh, very inexpensive. They fit perfectly um, in the Calyx unit. They are cardboard, um, so, you know, if you fill them too much, um, they get pretty heavy and they could rip at the corners. So what I did was I used to keep all my random single sheet papers in here. Um, and my, as you can see, it's my scrap collector until I put them in my file system. Um, uh, and I use it now just to capture scraps and then I use one for like different memorabilia that I want to scrap at some point. Um, I quickly moved away from the system. Again, my pet peeve, it's laying flat down. And I hate, see, like, having to try and grab and thumb through. It just, it, it doesn't work for me. It's too hard, and I don't like things to be too difficult. <laughs> I think, I'm kind of a lazy scrapper. Like, I don't have to, I don't want to have to fight to get to my papers. And I felt like I was doing that, as you can see, I was doing that with these boxes. So as nice as they looked on the shelf, um, with the little labels here, they, they, they were very pleasing to the eye and they contained things really nicely. I did not, um, I didn't like the functionality. For scraps, it's okay. For memorabilia, it's okay. Um, but for storing papers that I access regularly, I was not a big fan. Um, so that is, this is another option though. Again, for those folks who don't have a lot of money um, and have very little space, this is a great option. You can put it inside your closet on the top shelf or t t uh, you know, slide them in on the floor. They, they stack and they're very inexpensive. So it's a great place to start um, and build your, your organization system over time. Um, the other thing actually, uh, I'm going to go back to my very beginning statement on, I just thought of this, so sorry, <laughs> kind of going backwards a little bit, about what kind of scrapper you are. The other thing you need to think of, and this just reminded me of that, of, of what kind of scrapper you are. Are you a traveling scrapbooker, or do you just scrapbook at home? That's a, the third thing you really need to consider 
when deciding on how to organize your your product because for me I go to a lot of crops and I like to I scrapbook with some friends so we kind of like travel around to each other's houses and scrapbook like that um, and so I like to have systems in place that I can grab and go and easily take them and put them in my tote my, my rolling tote bag and and off I go I don't like to spend a lot of time um, packing and re putting product into different containers so that I can um, uh, travel. I like to grab and go. So I have my system set up so it's really, really easy for me to pack my, my scrapbook tote and head, head out the door. So that's also another thing to consider. These, I mean, I don't think they're very travel friendly. They're not that, I mean, they're sturdy, but they're not that durable like a plastic container. The lid easily comes off. Um, it's just not really great for travel. So I wouldn't recommend um, taking these along. That's just my opinion, but they're not, they're just really better for on a shelf or in a storage closet. So again, uh, these are paper studio boxes. I think Michael's has something similar as well, um, but another great option okay so the other um item i acquired and uh i'll show it to you here i was all excited about the alex drawer rolling cart and so i purchased the michael's knockoff version uh it was on sale like I think it was like a super sale, it was like 60% off or 70% off, so I ended up getting it for like $35, um, and I was so excited, I'm like, oh, I'm going to store my paper in here, um, I can label the drawers, and I don't have paper in them anymore, but you can see the drawers come out, they fit 12 by 12 beautifully, um, I now use it for embellishments, but at the time, I was storing paper, so I'd label all the front drawers. Um, with my different papers in there, my different collections, um, and I was super, super excited about it. And then I was like, I ran into the same issue, right? It was filed horizontally, and I hated to have to pull the whole stack out to find the paper I was looking for. I just, it just did not work for me. I don't, you know, so I've now repurposed it for embellishments, but again, for an inexpensive piece of furniture, um, it's really great um, for small spaces. It's on wheels, so it moves around very easily. Um, and so again, and if you can get it on sale with like a Michael's coupon or something, it's, it's really, you know, a good investment. It's not the, I mean, it's a little bit lower quality than the, uh, Ikea Alex drawers, but I don't have an Ikea nearby. And this was um, like half the cost. So to me, it was a win-win. I'm really glad I purchased this. I find it works great for my embellishments. But again, for paper storage, if you don't mind your papers being horizontal, it works really, really well. So another option for your um, horizontal paper, paper storage solution if you like that method. Um, okay, so now probably <laughs> I should probably get closer to the mic before I say that you probably couldn't hear me so let me talk to say that again uh, we're gonna move to vertical storage for paper now those are all my the previous were all my horizontal storage solutions um, but now I prefer vertical storage for all my paper I find that you can store more and I find that it's easier to locate and I'll go through my method but I want to start out again with my trial and error for the most the most efficient or the perfect vertical storage for my papers so I originally started cheap um, like really cheap <laughs> these are cardboard 12 by 12 files um, I think you get like a pack of I don't know six or 12 of these, I can't, I think there were six of them or eight of them. I don't know, it was like less than a dollar a piece, I think, or maybe a dollar a piece. It was really, really inexpensive. And I'm like, ah, oh, these are super cool. I could put them on my calyx shelf and I can file all my papers in here. And I was like, let's try it out. And you can label the spines. I got these little 
holes that you can pull them off the shelf easy and you can have them face this way or you could have them you know where the taller spines just face out and you can label them so i was like this is really great i get to use my labeler everything's stored vertically this system just might work so when i purchase them and i put them together i'll show you an example um i quickly excuse me i quickly realized i didn't love it um and i hope i don't know if you can see here one they're kind of wobbly um i mean they still stand up and if they're on a shelf that's not too much of a concern but if i want to take them out and i have this full of paper it's going to fall over so that's my concern number one um so the instability of it i did love the fact that it's vertical um i didn't like to that some of my papers especially if i didn't have these completely full they were curled a little bit and so i don't you know i try to avoid my paper curling all together um, if I can at all and so I was finding that these were curling a little bit and everything was like falling over and it was just very unstable I did like that I could just thumb through my papers very easily so that is a plus when it comes to storing vertically in a method like this versus the horizontal where you had to pull everything out and then look at what you want you could easily thumb through this type of storage system and they were e again they're easy to label I just found them really cheap and flimsy and I, I just again I wasn't a fan for that however if that doesn't bother you um, and you have you know these fit perfectly in the calyx unit um, so again you don't have to take them all the way out you can just pull them out slightly you can find the paper you want pull it out and you're good to go so i don't want you guys to think that this is a system that completely doesn't work because that's not true it my personal opinion it didn't work for me but it is still an option and it's a very inexpensive one so if budget is a concern for you this is another really you know good option for a system especially if you desire to have vertical paper storage and this allows you to do that on on with very little dollars so i think these are made these are scrap these are made by scrap rack i think i got them at hobby lobby um if i remember correctly so now I keep these in um, my fabric calyx bins um, and I keep, you know, all my extra kits and stuff that aren't on my shelf here. So I still use them. They're just not my primary storage source. Okay, so now we're getting to my current system for paper storage, um, which is... these awesome envelopes I love them so so much um, they hold a ton of paper I can easily thumb through and see what I'm looking for pull it out I'm done I got the spine labeled so for example this one is um, pink purple and multicolor random manufacturer single sheets so this is not a collection this is i how i um sort my pattern papers and let me just show you um, a little method to my madness because you're just like you know just you know why did you make you know choose this to be pink there's yellows and there's greens in this sheet well um i found that to me the pink stood out on this pattern paper that's number one and number two i thought about okay what kind of scrapbooker I am and you know they're double-sided which side do I like the best I love this side and I would see myself using this with a lot of other pink papers so to me it just made sense going and being filed in pink so I went through like these are this is multi this is multi I have these unorganized sorry guys <laughs> um, so I had all my pinks together so as you can see these are all what I considered to be pink colored papers so I felt like pink was the predominant color and now I'm getting into my purples and so they're all filed together so when I go and I want to scrapbook and I'm like I'm, I'm in the mood 
or I don't know what I want to do. Let's just start there because I don't know how many times that I go to scrapbook and I'm like, sometimes my picture will inspire me and other times I don't have a photo, I just feel like scrapbooking and I'm like, oh, what do I feel like doing? So I'll go into my, my pattern paper and I'll find, a, you know, for example, I really love this, I want to figure out how to use it. And so I'll pull this out and then I'll pull all my other coordinating, potential coordinating papers with this. And the other really great thing about this system is that I can just start with a couple papers and I'm like, ooh, I need another pink pattern. You know, I'm looking for stripes. I know exactly where to go. I grab my pink folder right visible on my shelf. So these are on my calyx shelf and the spine is facing me all labeled. I grab it and then I look through, done, like a minute instead of going into one of my boxes with with my paper laying flat have to pull it all out and thumb through it. it more energy more time wasted finding this to me is really efficient and easy and it speaks to my type a organizational personality <laughs> so i really love the system you can get these folders at hobby lobby they're made by the paper studio i think full retail they're $4.99 a piece, um, but again, as you probably, all of you know, is Paper Studio goes on sale a lot at Hobby Lobby, so I'd wait until they're 50% off and I'd buy them. They end up being $2.99 a piece. That's $3 you'll spend for paper storage. Very inexpensive, and I can fit a ton of these on a shelf. I'll um, show you a picture um, after I'm done talking about this um, of what my shelves look like so you can kind of get a sense of uh, how it looks so they also have a little handle here on the top and the other thing that I love about this as I mentioned before I am a traveling scrapbooker I <laughs> so I have the extra large rolling tote I don't remember the maker of it it's old but it's huge I love it so much um, when I go to scrapbook and I'm not, so sometimes I try to plan, like if I'm working on a project, I'll kind of just bring um, that project along with me. But if I'm, I'm going for a long weekend and I want a variety, all I have to do is grab all my envelopes, all my envelopes that I want to bring, and I plop them into my bag and I'm off. There is all my paper, all my projects ready to go. I just put them in my rolling tote. How, how easy is that? Instead of sifting through all your paper and figuring out what you want to bring, if you already have it organized in the, in the manner of which you scrap, it's just making your scrap room portable. And that, so that's what this system has done for me. And I absolutely love it. So I really love this system very, very much. And as you can see, this, this envelope's a little plump full. Um, I use these for everything. So this was demonstrating my pattern, you know, my pattern paper and how I store it. Um, I also store my collections um, in these same envelopes. So like I mentioned earlier, I scrap up by color, but I also like to keep collections together. So this one's pretty plum full, so I can't even button it. It's all my Christmas stuff. But as you can see, it fits a lot in here. Um, I don't have it labeled. <laughs> I should have. I haven't labeled it yet. But as you can see, I have, not only do I have papers in here, but look at all the embellishments I have in here as well. So I make DIY kits. I put them all together much like this. It's so easy. I have everything at, at my fingertips in one envelope in one kit. So if I feel like scrapbooking Christmas on a day crop, I grab this envelope. I pack my tools and I'm out the door. Look how easy that is. Or if I'm sitting at home and I'm like, I feel like scrapbooking Christmas. I don't have to go to four different places to get my embellishments, my thickers, my paper. It's all there together. I, I just, I love this. I can't tell you guys how much I love this system. It's really worked well for me. It's been my favorite so far. I've done this system, uh, I think I'm close to a year now and I'm not tired of it at all. And I am, I quickly identify 
uh, whether or not I like a storage system. And, and if I don't like it, it's out and I find a new one. I have not retired this yet. I absolutely love this system. So here's another example of a kit I keep together. And I have the spine labeled with the maker and the kit name. And it's, it's facing on my shelf. It's easy to find. Um, so I know exactly what's in here. I keep all the stickers and embellishments with the papers all together. Um, I love, love, love this system. And here's just another kit that you can see and view. This is one of my, my hip kits. I keep them uh, by month. Uh, well, that's how they come. And I keep each month separate and I can see all the product that I have and ready to use. So then once my kits are pretty much like exhausted, um, that's when I file everything in my other system, right? I take my pattern papers that I haven't used. I put them in my color envelopes, you know, by color. I sort my um, embellishments based on that system. I will have a video for that too. I know a lot of you are dying to learn uh, efficient ways to store embellishments. It's coming your way, I promise. <laughs> um, and then uh, I take my, my partial pieces and I file them into my scrap envelopes, which I'll show you guys that in a minute. And then now I have an envelope free for my next kit that I get in the mail. And it's just that, that cycle. Um, of going through kits and it works so so well so these envelopes go out and get them it's the best system and these fit perfectly on the calyx unit or you know or the I, I keep saying calyx most of you know what those are if you don't have an Ikea um, I like I'm from Maine we do not have an Ikea here so the equivalent of these shelves are if you can get them um, at Walmart they're the Better Home and Gardens brand. You want to make sure that they're the, the, I think they end up being like a 13 by 13 cube. Um, and then Target has, um, it might be Better Homes and Gardens or it's Threshold. No, it's Threshold at Target. Same thing. Um, basically the same thing. And those are 13 by 13 cubes and they fit this beautifully. And you can store them vertically or you can lay them flat like this whatever your heart's content but the important thing is is that when you go to look for your product it's easy to look through it so easy I love it okay I think I've talked these envelopes to death my favorite system I can't say that enough all right so The other thing I wanted to share with you um, is that I always have, well, I order Hip Kit Club. They're by far the best kit subscription, in my opinion. Check them out if you haven't, uh, hipkitclub.net. It's uh, beautiful kits every single month. They put paper kits together uh, from all different makers. They match the patterns and colors beautifully. And you get exposed to a lot of new product that you maybe wouldn't have bought on your own. Um, they do mixed media, project life, cardstock. It's embellishment. It's great. So um, I always, I go through my months. So I'm way far behind <laughs> in, my, in my hip kit subscription. However, um, I always keep one out on my desk um, to make sure that I use it. Um, so if not, you know, it could be a long time. And I always like to have new things out and available to me. So I have another, I have a desktop organizational video that highlights this, so I won't go, you know, it's probably a repeat for some of you, but I'll share it with you anyway. So I have these file organizers. This one's a clear acrylic one. I actually picked, I got lucky and I picked it up at Goodwill, but I, uh, for like two bucks, I think. Um, I love clear, clear acrylic stuff. I like being able to see everything in there for certain storage, not everything, but for this, I love it. Um, so it's, um, it's a three tier, um, as you can see, it's the sides are open. And so what I do is I open up one of my hip kits and I put everything in here, um, all the paper, all my uh, tall embellishment chipboard stickers letters and then all the smaller embellishment pieces um, 
in the front so I can see everything that I have. And as I'm scrapbooking, I'm like, oh, I could use some of these stickers on a layout. Like I was just doing some uh, happy album journaling earlier and I was like, oh, these stickers are perfect. I used them on that happy journal. So it puts it out, it puts it in front of me. And so I always try to, to grab these products because, you know, having everything stored um, in the in the file folders is not a bad thing, but um, it takes a little longer to use the product because you can't in any way, shape, or form remember all of the product you you you, you have. Um, uh, so, I, well, if you can, that is amazing. Props to you. I cannot. So I'm visual, so I like to look and see, and I'm like, oh my gosh, these little flags are so cute. I want to, I want to make a layout with these. This is inspiring me today. Um, so it's just a really great way to have something out on my desk that I can look at and I can, I can use it. Um, and I may have not thought of it, of using that product initially when I started my, my layout that I was making. So I really love this um, system very, very much. It stays on my desk and I just pick up, pick away at it as I scrapbook. Um, so I think you can get these file systems at, on Amazon. Like I said, I got this one at Goodwill. It was a stellar find, but, uh, it works out good. I got this one. This was also a Goodwill find. I like my local Goodwill. Same idea. It's a desk organizer. Um, but some of them come wide enough to fit 12 by 12s. You want to make sure that um, it kind of, you know, the back's high enough so that your your papers don't bend over. Um, this is another one. So what I did for a while, I've, I rearranged my desk again, guys. I know, shocking, right? <laughs> I used to have two of these on my desk. And so the first one, uh, the one I just showed you, has my new hip kit. And then this one would have all, like, um, leftovers, my DIY kit. I wasn't quite or leftovers from my hip kit. When I was ready to move to a new hip kit on my desk, I would then put all the leftovers in here because I wasn't quite ready to file them, but I was just, I wanted to look at a new kit. <laughs> so I had this one on here too, um, but now I've, I've have a new drawer system for my embellishment. So I am retiring this for now. I'm not completely getting rid of it because I, I do really love this so much um, for having kits available to you and embellishments. So I'm sure I'll find um, a new use for this to come. But that is uh, another one of those. So last but not least, I have... my pattern paper, or sorry, not my pattern paper, what am I saying, scraps. Um, so when I started the filing system for scrapbooking, um, I, I originally started using these envelopes first. These are a flimsier, more inexpensive envelope you can also get at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think you get like a pack of, I don't know, six for like six dollars four dollars these are really really inexpensive um and they're a tie um and so i used to put my kits and everything in here until i found the 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 more solid ones so i have a bunch of these still and so what i do is um i use them for my diy kits and i also use them for my scraps so which works out really well so as you can see here my scraps these are all my multicolor uh, scraps. I have um, a red, I have some red in here, but these are neutrals. <laughs> Gotta reorganize my scraps here. Um, this is black and white. Oh no, I lied. This is not scrap. This is traveling card stock. My bad. Um, so these are my black and white scraps. Neutrals pinks and purples, reds, and greens and teals. And that's how I file my scraps in a rainbow format. And then if I'm scrapping and I'm like, oh, I need, you know, I need a small piece of green. I go and grab this envelope and I thumb through it and it's super easy. It's on my shelf. I see them all the time. So I'm more likely to use them. So this is another great system. And if you liked the filing system and you're like not ready to invest in, you know, $2.99 or $4.99 for these firmer files, you can go the cheaper route 
um, and get multi-packs of these, um, probably twice as many envelopes for the same price. And again, they expand, um, they're just a little flimsier, but they still get the job done. So this is another really great option. And that's how I store my scraps. And I think I have covered paper organization to the best of my knowledge and my ability based on my experience. Um, I hope you have found this to be helpful um, and I hope maybe I've shared some systems with you that might work. Um, again, I think the key element here or the key pieces here are making sure that you know what kind of scrapbooker you are, how much space you have, and if you are a traveler or you stay stay put at home. Once you identify those, then you can easily find a system that works for you. So I hope you find found this video helpful. Um, please comment below if you have any questions and I will talk to you guys next time.